Well, Richard, we're on the eve of Royal Ascot and certainly going into the meeting. Uh, Perfect Power looks like your flag bearer this year. Um, how happy are you with him at the minute? Yeah, look, we're very happy with him. Uh, his work has been very good. Um, he, a little bit tired after the Guineas. Uh, we give him three, four easy days. But he's bounced right back and uh, he sort of he, he knows how to win at the course. So, uh, no, no, every, everything's going according to plan. Let's just chat back slightly. You knew this horse was a good horse after what he did in the Norfolk Stakes and then obviously he went on to win the Group 1s uh, in France and at Newmarket. But how, how much relief were, was there when you came back and proved to you that he'd trained on in the Greenham? Yeah, you're always worried uh, from two to three. Uh, you see it year in, year out, where a good two-year-old, sort of, especially a sprinting two-year-old, doesn't really step up to the mark. But the Greenham was... Look, we were very happy with him going in there. Uh, we did leave him a little bit short going there. Uh, when I say short, we sort of used the race as a as a prep to maybe run in the Guineas. Um, and he came through the... Good blow after it and sort of left it easier for me. I didn't have to do much before the Guineas. Um, so uh, it was used as a prep. But then, of course, we ran in the Guineas and we just felt maybe we just stretched the elastic band a little bit too far. And uh, it, it didn't come off, but he's had loads of time to recover. And uh, it's funny, he's a, he's a happier horse being trained as a sprinter. So, uh, you know, we're, I, think, I think that's what he is, you know. That's it. Is there anything in his sort of routine that you've had to change from that early time in the spring when maybe trying to stretch him out to... In your heart of hearts, do you think he is a sprinter? I do, genuinely, 100%, yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot different. Uh, you're trying to keep him relaxed. Uh, not doing as much sort of speed, sharp blowouts, uh, cantering from the bottom, and well, he hasn't he hasn't gone further than six furlongs since since the Guineas now. So he's uh, look, he didn't mind uh, cantering from the bottom or anything like that, but you just see by his demeanour that he's, he's he's happier with the training regime he's in at the moment. Now, Christoph Sumion has uh, got to know the horse quite well. Does he keep the ride at Ascot? Yes, definitely. Uh, we'd be disappointed if he didn't ride. Um, He's got great belief in the horse and has a great understanding of, of his ability. And to be fair to Christoph, he's from the day he rode him, he, uh, from the first time he sat on him, he, he, he branded him as, as, a, as a decent two-year-old and one of the best he's ridden. So, you know, when, when you've got a rider like that on board with the confidence he has, and I'm sure it, well, I'm a huge believer, it, it goes into the horses, you know, the confidence. So, no, looking forward to him and uh, I'm sure Christoph is as well. Now, the Commonwealth Cup as a whole, it's, I think if my homework's correct, you've only ever had three runners in it. Now, you've done, came pretty close a few years ago. You were third as well just a couple of years ago. You think this horse is in that sort of calibre? Uh, look, I'd have to say he's better than them, um, without being particularly rude to them. I think uh, was Sansa Marley was one. And Ventura Rebel, I think, was third, was he? Yeah, Ventura Rebel. He was a little bit unlucky that day, but this is a different horse altogether. He's a, he's a classier type of horse and and has a great will to win, and not saying they didn't, uh, it's a bit unfair, but uh, he'd, he'd, he'd have a bit more uh, class than them, maybe. Any added pressure around a Royal Ascot favourite? Uh, not really, uh, it's better than having 33 to one shots that I'm used to, so uh, no, look, we're, we're very happy and looking forward to it. And we're talking just a few days out from Ascot, but in an ideal world, ground conditions, it looks like the sun might be shining, is that good news for him? Yeah, he's won on all sorts of ground. Uh, he's won on soft. He's won on uh, he's won on fast ground. Um, not really. Uh, if anything, uh, a bit of slower ground just to just to give chan uh, him a chance to sit a bit longer. Just when it's very rattling at Ascot, you've got to you know they, they tend to get away from you. So, but that's me thinking thinking too much I'm not really bothered to be honest any ground let's talk um Kulthum. um she was a, a promising three roll before a little injury struck and then she's come back earlier this spring with a, a really um, impressive win first time back how uh, how impressed were you with her that day yeah to be fair to her um, she <laughs> it was just nice to get a bat on track she, she had a little setback after the sandy lane which I thought was a huge run she was probably very unlucky that day which was top top class sprint in form um, then we ran out of time, and then we did get a chance to run at Newmarket in the Phillies listed race, which was great, and she duly won. Um, we felt there was a lot of improvement in her, and uh, she's a filly that we've always liked. I mean, she was I think she was placed in a group one as a two-year-old in the Chiefly Park, and but the time hasn't been lost on her. She hasn't had a lot of racing, and she, she's a filly that could still be improving. You know. It's quite a big jump up, isn't it, obviously, from listed into a race like the Platinum Jubilee, but uh, she gets the allowances. You think she might be able to make some sort of impact? Yeah, it's, you're always uh, more worried about not the home team, it's the, it's the foreigners coming in, the Australians, the Americans and different things like that. But 
I think the faster they go in the race, the, the better it'll suit this filly. Um, she's a filly that travels well and likes to pass horses late, so if she can just hang on to them early and, and, and come home, you never know, she could run a big race. Let's just switch back to the juveniles, obviously, as well as the standout clear point who goes for the Norfolk. You've got uh, rousing Encore in the mix for the Coventry. He's a relative veteran of three races now. Yeah, he's <coughs> he's improved a lot for each run. Uh, his first run was was a good run, really. He was just about ready to run. I think he was one of our. I think he was our first two-year-old runner. And then he won at Beverly, won well, and then at Ponty the other day won really well. Uh, we haven't done much with him since Ponty. Just ticked him over, but. It's just whether his form's good enough, but uh, he's, he's, he's a horse, as you know, knows how to win and uh, has had plenty of experience. And you'd have thought, on pedigree at least, um, a stiff six at Ascot might be right up his street? You'd imagine the other day at Ponty there, uh, he, he won well and recovered really quickly after the race, which which I, I don't think I've ever seen a winner stop blowing as quick. So he didn't have a very hard race there the other day. So, But as you know, we're, we're, we're stepping up to the Champions League stuff, but he's definitely worth his, worth his chance there, you know. And Rousing Encore could face stablemate the Riddler in the same race. Yeah, he's just maybe a shade unlucky in the, the Beverly race, but on pedigree he should stay well. He's probably the strongest two-year-old I have, when I say strongest, mature, most mature two-year-old. Uh, he was stuck out in a little bit on a limb from the draw and had to drop in and give them a head start and came home well, so a step up to six will, will definitely suit him. Uh, he's had three races as well, so he's hardened. And uh, he's a horse that'll travel well in the race, it's just whether he's good enough. And in the Windsor Castle, you may have uh, Ramazan entered. Yeah, he was uh, disappointed in a four-runner race at Ponty, finished last, uh, but bounced right back at uh, Beverly and uh, won really well. Uh, his work has been very good since. Uh, it's a bit of a lottery race, the, the Windsor Castle, you tend to find there's a lot of runners in it. Um, but he's, he's a good, strong, hardy two-year-old, so uh, no, we're, we're very pleased with him at the moment. It takes some serious speed to win a Queen Mary at Royal Ascot. Do you think Platinum Queen might have the uh, the right uh, material there? Uh, she's got plenty of speed, uh, natural speed. Um, we we haven't had her that long. She came from the breeze ups from Tally Ho Stud. Uh, I think she did quite well now. The wind the other day, she sort of hit the gates and jumped a little bit right, but travelled real strong during the race and uh, the front two came well clear. She's entitled to improve a ton, um, but going back to speed. At Ascot, you definitely need speed for two-year-olds, and she has got natural speed, so uh, she'll be able to lay up just whether she, she, she can pick up from, from the fast pace, we'll see. Now, the Britannia is one of the most competitive handicaps of the entire week. You've got Blenheim Boy in the mix there. Is he showing good signs at home? Yeah, he uh, he won really well first time out. Um, and then was very disappointed at York. He was too keen and did everything wrong. Uh, but his work has been very good since. Um, but in off 90, he's going to be sort of middle to lower end of the, the weight scale and I think a fast pace and will suit him well uh, but he's, he's a horse that works well so but it's it's a tough race that one. Another name to note maybe sneaking into then uh, Sandringham handicap no nay Nikki. Yeah she's a filly we really like um, she she ran in a six furlong novice to begin the season I think the winners won the Italian uh, the, the German guineas and the, the farms worked really well uh, a little bit disappointed in a in a in a listed race at York. She was drawn on the outside and said I had to drop in and never got back into the race. But off uh, if she gets in off 83, uh, I'll be really looking forward to see her run. And lastly, but not least, what are your thoughts regarding Ventura Diamond next week? Yeah, we need some rain for her. Uh, she loves heavy ground. Uh, it doesn't look like she's going to get the opportunity to race. But she progressed well last year. But. Uh, I'd say she probably won't be going poor girl unless we get a deluge by the end of the week. And overall, Richard, targets for the week? Any 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 dreams? You're looking for three, four winners? You take one. <laughs> you always take one at Ascot. Uh, it's a very tough place to get winners. Um, as I always say, a lot of good trainers don't get winners there. So, But as long as they all come back safe, uh, which is the thing that I should be saying, but I'd be, I'd be disappointed if I don't get something out of it. So we're in with a gorgeous looking specimen, a two-year-old clear point, Richard Fye. This horse goes for the Norfolk Stakes at Royal Ascot and he won at air first time out. I'm impressed with you. Were you with him? Yeah, it, it was a huge performance on the day. Um, we had planned to, to run him three weeks prior, but I'm afraid he, he just had a bit of a dirty scope. I think he's only a baby, a bit of a cold. So it stopped us from running, but it was just great to get a run into him. Um, and to see what he'd look, I don't know what he beat, but he, uh, 
he beat daylight. So we, we, were, we were hoping he'd run like that. Uh, his work had been extremely good at home, and as you can see, he's got a great, great demeanour, and he did everything very professionally. And uh, no, we're looking forward to it. We're dropping him back to five. He's quite a quick horse. Um, and looking forward to him, really looking forward to him. Now, eagle-eyed spotting life readers have probably spotted that he's not only in the same silks as Perfect Power, but uh, he's by the same sire as well, isn't he? Our dad. Um, dare I ask, are there any, or if any, similarities? Yeah, both can go fast easily. <laughs> um, a bit more scopy, this horse. Uh, he'd, be, he'd be as big as Perfect Power was at, at this stage last year. He'd be bigger than him. Um, but they are, they're, they're more or less, Tina does both of them now, she, she'd probably answer that better, but the, they're, they're two very laid back characters and just, just get on with their job and eat and do everything right and pretty pretty easy to train really. Um, is, he, is, he, is he a friendlier horse this one? He wouldn't bite you like Parsnip, <laughs> I call Perfect Power Parsnip, he wouldn't bite her out but it's just like him for laying down and eating, sleeping and eating, that yeah. same, same, as, same as other lads. So. They are very alike, definitely. Fantastic. And was the Coventry Stakes even in your thinking with this horse? Because that was presumably an option. Uh, it was. Um, I, I sort of get the feeling the owner likes the Norfolk. Um, and to be honest, I was going to run him over five uh, first time. And uh, just the way the races lay, and I needed to get that run into him, we did go six. Um, uh, no, we were always thinking Norfolk, really. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. And again, the sun's going to come out, I think, at Royal Ascot. Uh, decent ground, no excuses. You think he's going to be quick enough and man enough for this race? Uh, I always hate one run into Ascot. I prefer two. Um, but as I say, uh, we had a little blip about a month ago, which stopped us from running them twice. But the way he did it at, uh, at uh, Air was extremely professional and travelled strong and picked up on Aston. You know, for a two-year-old to sort of go clear with his head down first time out, you know, you, you'd imagine he will improve for the experience, but he's pretty professional. Fantastic. We can't wait to see him at Royal Ascot. Good luck. Richard Fire going for back-to-back -back wins in the Norfolk Stakes.